Well, we'll be heading into the next match of the of the winners finals with uh, Santa versus Magico. It is the expected matchup. We've seen them play each other for a long time. They are often our finalists, and this is not uh, the last time. I suppose that we'll see them there. Not today. I mean, obviously, because one of them is going <laughs> to the grand finals, and we have the winners <laughs> finals right now. So yeah. Whew, okay. Man, that was that was brutal. I'm sorry, <laughs> not a foyer. That you you got. You got done dirty there. Mm -hmm. It's good. It was well played by Magical. Was, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's trying, it's trying to power up those ground units, right? Melee units. Oh, yeah. Really, if you're going for those uh, aggressive units, it's well, if you're going for those range units, you want to be out on the map. You want to be challenging your opponent and not be stuck on your own base because, well, being stuck on your own base is how you lose your base because you can't micro back anymore. Uh huh. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about this map is that it's easy to defend your natural, but it's. Hard to get out of it? Like, if yeah. your natural starts getting hit, you're done. Yeah. Well, that, 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 is, a, that is a sad life sometimes. You you, your life just flashes before your eyes, and then your natural goes. You're like, oh, well, I guess it's time to GG. What are we heading well, to? Well, yeah, they were, they were depending on basically, okay, I take your army, and then I move from there, and then with that, I get to deal the necessary damage to keep, stay in the game. Yeah, like honestly, if if Voyager had managed to say, keep their natural, I think they would have had a chance because their army was still it was more alive than their opponents. They had a better production setup for their opponents. They, granted, Magical had a third, but Voyager could have taken a third, pushed forward. They wouldn't have had to worry so much about attacks in the meantime. I yeah, know it's it's an interesting combo because if you look at these old, like the the mass Zephyr like that was kind of kind of meta when last voyeur was last playing with a lot of the, a lot of uh zephyr in the craft versus craft matchup right yeah it really was that was a while ago that was a quite a while ago uh the medic comes and goes especially for generalists that you know they have such a powerful spell you need to be careful not to make them too powerful that's all you see uh, but they are fun they're very fun units and unfortunately they're not strong enough against that mass Zentara unless you have perfect micro which for yeah were... i think i think honestly it might have been that. I I do still think Voyeur was taken kind of as a counter. They were thinking, well, my opponent went for a lot of Absolvers and Thrones mm -hmm. and just stuff that Zephyr deals with in theory. So I'm going to deal with that that way. And yeah. honestly, it had a decent chance. I think if the wind step away from the wind step around the natural had gone towards it rather than getting stuck yeah. on the Zentari, it would have been fine. Well, well like preparing so far in the future when Ze Zephyr just... They're expensive units, which is another one of their issues, right? This in this early stage of the game, you can't if you afford, if you buy them, that's pretty much all you get. Where your opponent can really tech up and get those higher tier units. Of course, Match Code said just went Mass Centauri, but still he could tech up behind it and get those higher tier units. Let's see what they do this time. Magical And Santa. Santa's the early expansion. Santa going for Whoa! Okay, Santa. Looks like we are gonna see a little bit of signature Santa cheese. <laughs> you don't see double altar start like that unless you're gonna go, I don't know, mass bone stalker like Santa seems to be doing right now. And Magical yeah. knows, okay, sees it coming. I gotta gotta change plans. Yeah, Magical knows exactly what's up because on top of everything there is no uh well there is no Efer, so you know, okay, there's nothing yep. else can be bone stalkers. And he'll be getting on his way. Magical sent his uh first Legion Hall in the middle of the map though, which can be kind of a curse right now if he gets right on top of it. Of course, that means that he... Oh, yeah, Santa can take provision. that. Yeah, if Santa goes it. forward and takes... That Legion Hall is so vulnerable, Magical's not going to be able to muster an army. Yeah, he needs to get Zentari out. Zentari will have the Hallowed from the get-go. Yeah. That, that can be a pretty weak win. Santa needs to find Santa's it Santa's win condition likely relies on having Pyre to work with. Like, I'm not 100% sure... With, I'm not 100% sure which specific strategy they're going for. There is a strategy that requires Hunting Grounds, so you need the Pyre. There is also just go forward and do a bunch of damage and hope your opponent doesn't get the counter in time, which is what Santa's going for. Yeah, Zentari's coming out. Zentari are pretty It'll good be at up time. Covers, but not quite that good. It comes down to micro. Both them oh, micro. Oh, in Hallowed Ground. No, in Hallowed Ground, I think, I think Magical's got this. He Santa with reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Work, work for everything. Oh, yeah. Eight, eight stalkers can take care of two Zentari, no problem. Yeah, is, this, is this how this game ends? <laughs> Just like that, Legion Hall goes it down. It is! Magical. It is! Oof. Two minutes, 12 seconds. I believe that is our fastest game on stream so far. 
the mind games here. This is just a complete mind game from Santa. Knowing Magical loves putting his Legion Hall on the map and says, yeah, if you do that, that just means the most stalkers can kill it. I don't need anything. I just kill it. Oh, and that's Mag goes. Magical saying they were so sure it was a call build. I guess they were thinking there'd be some ether added in later. Because yes, double altar with ether, double altar with ether into Neurosite is absolutely a call build. And not quite yeah, that ordering, but that is... that. But without yeah, the ether, there's no way. Yeah, because the calls... When you go for Zakals, you gotta go really, really quick on those uh, on those ethers, right? You need to go so quick on those yes. ethers. The Zakals are just so expensive. If you want to make that quantity, that's how you go to go. Yeah, for it. that's yeah, the well. that's the thing. Santa, Santa, like the last time Zakal were big, Santa would have been able to get away with me with one, maybe two ether extractors early on. But in the current patch, Santa would have had to go for both their main base and possibly get a natural expansion. Like one base Zakal rush, I don't know if it is still a thing. It might be, but two base of call rush is more, more is what we've been seeing. That yeah, that's been the meta. It's been two base. Well, that's also been in two v two and one v one. It might be a bit different depending on maps as well. We haven't had enough one v one tournaments with that. I will see if Santa decides to bring up some call rushes, but he tricked Magical. Magical did not catch up on the there's no efers and didn't stay long enough to check. Of course, the bone stalkers would have killed it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a game one nope. to Santa. I gotta say, props for one basing Orzum. That's that is a daring move that paid off, and I think Magical's going to be much more cautious about where they place their Legion Hall this going forward. Uh, well, you know, if, if you scout well enough, maybe you can just cancel Legion Hall and remake it somewhere better. Uh, but of course, Santa not going no. for the same. He's no, not a no, no, pony. He's, no. He's this heavy. is yeah. This that's just to get get it win, knock your opponent off their off their balance, and then go for the normal macro play. So no, this game's probably going to be like 20, 30 minutes. That, that was just <laughs> two minutes for game one, because why not? <laughs> Man, why would you go longer? You don't have to. Why worry would about you, that. really? Exactly. All right. So Santa is definitely putting Magical in no real danger. Actually, Magical's going. You know what? No, we're gonna do the same thing. See what happens. And they're seeing early expansion, no real risk. They can just drop the Legion Hall up front and use that to take control. Santa will have a bit of a harder time in the five to seven minute mark. If they go for any attacks, because Magical's going to have pretty much full control of the center. Well, that's really been Magical's strategy, especially on this map. With a lot of choke points, you can put those towers down, and it's pretty much impossible to attack into it. Uh, but Santa is someone who can figure out how to attack into those. He knows how to play against a one basing or zoom, well, a, a one uh, uh, a defensive or zoom. And yeah. He, if he can figure it out, well, we'll see what he plans to do. You can also just go for frums, right? Go for a counter harass and attack multiple places at once. There's a lot of different strategies to deal with type, this type of a uh, strategy. So far, just Moan Stalker is not too much E for so far. Well, enough that Santa will have preparations, but yeah, not enough to go for any rushes. Like, tech, tech is on the table eventually. I always go for tech at some point. It's just the question of which one. Especially as I don't know. I mean, that last yeah. game, we didn't see any tech at all. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, with the Trident tech structure, we really have a choice of any type of tech, and it's pretty hard to scout. Magical won't know what his opponent's is going it for. Still, I don't know if I'd still call it Trident. I don't think it. It's not I quite think Trident. I, yeah, I think ever since the Amber Room has been available without upgrading the Godheart, I don't think Aru can really be called Trident. It's, it's a very different kind of thing. It's its own thing, yeah. Yeah, it's its own thing, which is great. Yeah. Happy to see it. Yeah, it's a bit more Trident than. Uh, than, uh, than just a standard, like, uh, the straight line that is the Croft faction. We'll see exactly how to go about it. Speaking of... Magical... Well, taking their time, getting their tech up. Much more concerned about getting the early Pyre, getting early map control. Santa Claus... They're gonna go for it, though. They're gonna see if they can what they can take out. I mean, it's not Bone Stalker Rush, but it is still... some damage. Are there reinforcements? There are no reinforcements coming in. Santa... Nah, Slow things down a little bit. Yeah, lost the Bone Stalker in exchange, was able to cancel the tower. Uh, which, I mean, canceling the tower is better than losing it outright. But you do get most of your uh, power back out of it. I like that move, though. I mean, that yeah. slows Magical down. We're, we're three and a half minutes in. This tower would have been done by the four-minute mark. And now it's going to take an extra 30 seconds or so. Which is... It doesn't sound like a lot. But Santa's going to have that much more time to get their thrums up, just generally get their army going, that 
you know, not having to worry about mid game or middle middle of the map control and asserting it, that just gives Santa much more room to breathe. Yeah, well, Santa's going to be... Well, Magical's going to be pretty happy. He came in and saw the Bone Canopy. So he knows Frums are on the way. So he has to figure out which defense he wants. He's he's heading for... It's often been sent knows as he's getting the Arm as yep, fast as he can. Is. There it is. But we'll be fast enough as uh, the Frums are already out on the field. They're heading cross map. And we'll see how many kills they can get before the defenses come up. The towers come up to help defend. But behind this, as he's forcing his opponent to deal with the Frums, Mad Santa will get a bit more map control as well. Nope. And get, they are getting the third. There we go. We have not... This is what we've been needing to see from the earlier games. Was getting the third while going for the harassment attack on Magical so you don't fall behind an economy. The so Santa is playing this exactly right. The harassment's there just to make sure that Magical can't get cocky while Santa goes for the expansion. Right, he goes for the tower, but the tower just comes just comes in the nick of time. There's Oof. even enough for Empire Unbroken if he wants to keep it alive. And there we and go. And there it is. Yep, there's the Empire Unbroken. Well, forcing your opponent to use fire is still decent for Santa. He didn't lose really that many units in this push again. And even if he did, there were cheap units. Wait, no, he did lose a Thrum. At some yeah, point. These, they also Thrum. That's a little bit... That's not the most expensive. They're going for mass Thrum. Out of three, one's a big deal. Out of nine Thrums that Santa's planning on going for, one Thrum is less significant. Yeah, that's... Aiming for that stalker, for that bone stalker and from army. Sentinels are out for magical. It'll be much harder to dish out the damage now. What I'm liking about this, Santa has gone for a very aggressive approach. Which means, Magical, what map control they have, they have to both defend rather thoroughly, and also Santa can make sure that Magical's not expanding willy-nilly. Notice, in particular, Santa's hanging out by Magical's obvious fourth. So, Santa's making sure Magical cannot take this base without them knowing, and without them having to fight for it. So... Santa can actually maintain economic parity despite Orzm defensiveness by for, by forcing Magical to lean into Orzm defensiveness yeah, rather than just use it as an asset. It yeah, needs to be careful those Frums though, getting a bit out of position away from his Bone Stalkers. Nothing can deal with Sentinels, but he takes one out himself. No, no, no eight, eight, thrums, eight Thrums, two Sentinels. It's apparently Santa knows something that we don't. It's a, it's a solid army. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Bone Stalkers, oh, the path. Pathing through the sign did not get... Got to get him to go away and then around. Like, that was unfortunate. Yeah, you to be careful with the pathing. The Frums going back into the natural. Get as many kills as they can. That's quite a few as the defenses are out of position. Taro comes out, but a bit too late to deal with this. Dervish yeah. and Hallowers coming out. Oh, no, Sentinels coming out. No, it's got to be Sentinels. Like, Hallowers would just get wiped. Yeah. <laughs> Dervish can at least make the Bone Stalkers' lives miserable, but Hallowers would not stand a chance. And here come the Sentinels, and at this point, the Frums are forfeit. There's only four left against three Sentinels. Sentinels, after that, won't have anything to defend. They'll be there for when the Behemoths yeah. eventually make their return on the map. And return, Though it's I mean. worth noting, that bought a lot of time. Santa's got their fourth. Santa has the Red, the red Veil, which means they are going to get upgrades. They're both going to get Red Seers, and they're going to get fully upgraded Bone Stalkers. So expect a lot more DPS on the Bone Stalkers than we've had so far. Maybe, though... This next fight, don't take it, Santa. Please don't. No, they're going for it. They're going for it. They did not quite have the DPS they needed yet. No. No, no, no. Fall back. Fall back. Okay. Uh, dervish or The Dervish have their Dervish speed, so they can really jump on top of everything. And that's what Santa's, That's what Magical is counting on right now. He wants to jump those Magical. And they go down oh. so quickly. The swish and swash as if those Dervish going through them like but, but hot, but hot, that knife. And the Bone Stalkers can't set up. This is not... Santa's game right now. The Red Seers queued forward, hold, trying to hold the line, summoning Zol as well to hold the line. Santa is doing everything they can to try to make this work, but it's just not happening. Everything has gone down. Santa's waiting on reinforcements, but even then, their setup is just not there. Zol summon did some work. Soften up some Dervish, killed a few. It's at least an opening for the Bone Stalkers to get back in here. But the third is now threatened. Everything's open. Santa's giving, giving away that fourth. Or the Magical can just do anything they want in the map for the next few minutes. And Santa can't say anything to that. Yeah, the Zakals are coming in. The Zakals are good at defense. There's a few Sentinels left. He's pulling everything he can to try and deal with this. But the Sentinels are still alive. And coming for the last little frubs, they're still alive. And at this point, Magical can just take this space. Santa will try to rebuild as much as he can. 
But at this point, it looks so hard for him. He's losing that base as Magical takes his fourth. The back and forth can still happen, though. Santa Belize, he's bringing out his uh. calls to try and push this back. His, maybe his final push, he tries to push in it, but the Zentari holds strong as the call is forced to move back. That timing from Magical was perfect. If they had waited another 30 seconds, Santa would have had enough forces, both the Red Seers and the and just the sheer number of Bone Stalkers, to be able to wipe out Magical's army off the ambush damage. And that wasn't an option. Like, that, like Magical cut that off completely. Because, like, imagine what, Ma imagine what Santa has now, combined with what Santa had before. That's, that's the, the army that Magical would have been dealing with. Yeah, it's a dangerous so, thing on the map, just a yeah. little bit too long there. If he had, maybe he had pulled, pulled back to his tower or something. But the Dervish came in with their speed and were able to just jump on top of all those bone stalkers, and they went down in seconds. And now Santa's invested so heavily into bone stalkers, like magical, magical does know this is a thing. Like they know this is likely how these things are going to go. I'm trying to deal with this it. gonna be a problem. And now, after the third being lost, the fourth being threatened. Santa with a Santa with a better position to work from here. One of the red tears goes down immediately. No mana on either. Could drop a blood plague if they have the research, but they don't seem to. The call pl placement is ideal, but Magical simply has a greater army on their side. Hallow ground helping out. The calls go down. The Bone Stalkers doing what they can, but Santa, their army is is struggling to hold this. Might be able to take this at the very least. Magical forced to take several losses. Like, take great losses, doesn't get the base, Santa barely saving it as Magical is forced to let Santa keep their fourth. Yeah, that's what happens with faster reinforcements, barely able to keep it, but behind all of this, Magical is still rebuilding. He lost a bit of his army, but that was a good trade for Magical's side as well. So units will be remade uh, behind all this, and more Dervish coming out for to, ha to handle all these Bone Stalkers. And yeah, the Anti-Light units will shoulder metal again. They will jump on top. <laughs> And Santa behind this, heading for the Ancient, maybe that's going to be the difference maker. Getting that final power immortal spell can make a big difference in these fights. Uh, but not quite yet. No, they, if they if they poke the Ancient, Magical knows it's going to prompt a fight and Santa can't take that. And so Magical heads back, just sends the Dervish back to the Northeast base and to deal with Santa's, to all of Santa's mining. Santa will lose all of his mining on his Northeast base. He just can get a bit of power behind this. Santa right now is relying on getting their composition back up. They need the Zikals to protect from the Dervish, and they don't have very many. Oh, okay. Santa Loose might be able to find an opening for Arianists themselves. It's the idea. Get rid of the Sentinels. You can rebuild Thrums or Behemoths and start... Well, okay. Behemoths are going to be a little while longer. Santa has time to clear the skies. Yeah, never give up, never sing, uh, surrender as the deep as the root comes down again. Take care of these units. Oh, so many dervish. So, so many dervish. Trying to root them out is not likely to happen. Yeah, keeping the Zakal just in front is a perfect solution. <laughs> Zakal Minesweeper. Oh, that's a dead Zakal. <laughs> is that going to be at... That allows the army to get away. That's the important thing. As long as Santa doesn't lose their Bone Stalkers, a dead Zakal is a good Zakal. It's a, it's a productive Zakal. <laughs> It's a call that has died for its compatriots. Yeah, looking at the army value at this point, it seems pretty equal. But Magical, again, heading for the counterattack. And can you get here? Oh, oh, this is big. Magical does not have many Dervishes to deal with the Bone Stalkers here. The, th the ambush damage comes in, takes out a throne immediately for free. Stopping the expansion on top of that. Santa might have a route back into this game as the Dervish are forced to engage the army. They can't go for this. They're split. Reinforcements are coming in, but the Dervish are getting split out from the rest of their force. Zakal doing wonders to get rid of them. And while more thrones are up, Santa has the answer. Santa has a very powerful army. Despite losing his third, he was able to rebuild pretty successively. Really keeping his fourth alive over oh, oh, earlier today was really what kept him mm -hmm. in this game. And behind this, slowly but surely, building a strong, powerful army as he can. However, Magical is no slouch out getting those all-powerful thrones, getting a lot of Dervish to deal with those light units. It's going to come down to engagement. At this point, Santa wants the Ancient. Will Magical try and engage? Magical's coming from the back with all his Dervish, ready to jump on those Bone Stalkers. Pillar comes down right in the middle of the Ancient. Santa's... Oh, that's... Army's going down. Oh, no! 
Magical's taking everything out. That pillar was all they needed. Santa's lost their army once again and doesn't have the money to rebuild it quickly. They know it. Magical pushes it to game three. Oof. Well, Magical with the pillar, the final engagement, they're perfect for Magical using the pillar, using all his abilities, all his thrown swords with no means of escape as a dervish. Just create a perfect concave around the units, taking game two. Uh, and uh, we'll see which map Santa decides for game three, how he wants to re his revenge to go. Is Magical just playing Orzum this whole tournament? Maybe he is. That's uh, seems like a decent strat so far. Uh, certainly on Frontiers. That's been working out for them. <sighs> yeah, you know, it's deciding to stop existing all over the place. Deciding to uh, not cast their spells and die. We need to work on them to not do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think, I guess in those Red Seers, they were planning on using Red Plague on the yeah. Ancient fight. Oof. Oof, man. Okay, well. Anyway. Any game figure out what map we're going to be using. Yeah, sent it. It's inside a map. Once we have a map. Uh, Once we have a map of the game. Yeah. wonder if they're going to stick with our current factions. I do really like the ambush right now. We haven't seen... Like, when ambush had just arrived, when we had infinite cloak like that, it was a pretty... Like, everyone just got the... Everyone just got the detectors really quickly. But now it's not... A, it just doesn't happen anymore. People are... Mm. Not detecting as much and can really ambush really well. Yeah, it's been... It's... It was a good attempt. But the sheer mass dervish did not let it happen. So we are going to get a rematch on Frontiers once again. Mm. Frontiers are the first map we ever had and... We used to never see it because Lost Runs is better, and now we're only seeing it. Well, to be fair, it's a very different map than it used to be. <laughs> it is. <It's... laughs> mm. like, okay. old, old Frontiers, New Frontiers, very, very different. Very different yeah. maps. This one's much better. Yeah, no, having a, a bit more defensible, having the... <laughs> Santa missing the age of province, but I'm quite happy to have more map. Of course, I wouldn't mind having province. The one of one map was if you use it forever and having just a, I, the diversity is great. But I'm I quite wouldn't happy mind for a back bit. eventually. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, mind exactly. it back eventually. Like once we get once we get a little bit more people playing on frontiers and canyon and everything's more normalized, I wouldn't mind lost province being an option in one v one. But I also think it needs to be like. Yeah, kind of, you gotta be reasonable about it. Yeah, we need to force our players to play on these maps for a bit. And we'll see the just a little bit, just to make sure they work, because Province is so popular, and it, it's it been tested. There is another 1v1 maps in the works, right? You want to correct on that? I or, couldn't tell you. I thought there was I'm, more. I'm, I'm sure there are, because there's oh, yeah. going to be more maps. Like, that's just how it works. More maps are going to be built over time. But I don't know if there are any actively being worked on that are likely to be released. I've, I have no knowledge. There might be. I'm happy. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? The, the wonders of Alpha. Yep. Stuff just gets dropped. And it's like, all of a sudden, hey, have a new economy system. Great! Yeah, the economy system was pretty pretty significant change. I'm curious if they want to do another one after this, if they're heading for something else. There's always new ideas coming, popping and going. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Like, if you're, if you're in Alpha, oh yeah, I should probably do the raffle thing for people who are, like... I didn't actually say I was doing raffle, but yeah. If you're in this and want to, if you have gotten the alpha key or are wanting to get alpha key, do do note that it is an alpha. It is for testing purposes. It's great if you want to have fun. We really encourage you to come in and play it around. That's awesome. Just bear in mind, things are going to be experimental because it is an alpha. Yeah. And to be fair, for an alpha, it's really well advanced. You can play. Well, we're having tournaments. We're having money tournaments for this game already. So, it yes, is well that, yeah, it's like we're we're finishing tournaments for alpha. But yeah, the money tournament part. Yeah, the game is stable enough and reasonably balanced enough to allow for money tournaments to be reasonable. So yeah, it's yeah do. But yeah, in general for like systems and such, those get changed all the time. Different experiments with different things just to make sure the gameplay is optimal by the time we get into beta. No, also, I, I should point out, Magical's turning the tables here, going for Mala themselves, seeing what they can pull out. Like, Santa heading for his room. <laughs> Santa going for his room. Yeah. 
Because Magical was like, nope, I'm done playing Orzum. I've, I've won a game with Orzum, lost a game with Orzum. Let's try somebody else, see what happens. And I'm very curious because we saw... Oh, we Magical saw the Soul power. struggle. We didn't see Mala, though. Magical steals the power from his opponent with a teapot, despite the moat being pulled for that. Oh, that's going to hurt so bad for Santa. All right, Ooh. everyone who wanted a teapot, teapot steal on stream, there you go. There's your, there's your teapot pyre steal. It's still a thing. It's getting, getting destroyed. I actually wasn't sure if it would be still be a thing. I think we haven't seen it. it I guess because Lost Province is really hard to pull off, but Frontiers, it's a lot easier to pull off. So there you go. All oh, these units. Oh, power camp up, and that's going to help a bit in defense. It's teapots. You can't steal that one, unfortunately. You'll try your best, but not this time. No, they can't beat it down either. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Doesn't coming up. Buttons. Yeah, Magical coming on top. And, you know, at this point, it's a bit dangerous for Santa to be on the map like this. His, uh. Yeah, exactly. He loses one Zentari immediately. He loses a second one. Oh, and he needs to head back to the power. No, Loses Santa, as well. Santa, you saw what Magical was doing. You got to go for more of the stuff to make it work. Otherwise, you're going to just die. And he uh, died. Well, no, he got dying. the power. He was going for the power, but. At this point, uh. I mean, Magical. that was fine. They got. They could have. They could have run off. They didn't have to hang out. Yeah. Magical will be quite happy with the map control that he's gotten from this. Uh, keeping his mass hunters are really good for map control in general. Heading all over the map. Oh, in case people are wondering, th so the economy basically got sped up. That was the biggest thing. The like, it's it just was. The biggest thing is that the biggest noticeable thing. Bases last longer. If you see, there's a six thousand alloy here. It's, it was eight thousand. It was fifteen hundred ether per extraction. Now it's two thousand. But they also mine like 10% faster. So everyone... And so you're seeing a lot... Of, both Sand and Magical are building much larger armies much faster than they used to. That's That was the big change. Yeah, for the number of nerds out there, it's about 11% more, which is caused by... As you said, there's more E for being mined. There's also two extra workers, which mine a bit more, as well as an increase in the Bastion mining. So yes. all, these changes, all these changes come together. Bastion mining being uh, one of the towers you have when you start the game... And oh, it just gives yeah. a free mining it's the whole time. So your right first yeah. yeah, so your first base gives you two full base worth of mining. So it really helps defenders advantage. You want to play one base, you still have two <laughs> Though, base economy. Offense is a bit more important right now for Santa as they have wiped out Magical's force. Magical has no defense whatsoever to speak of from in the middle of the map. They have managed to get some reinforcements at their base, but mid map control is currently entirely Santa's. Really love this right now. We have the circle, the, the like the circle of life of units right now. The the anti light units really dealing with those light units being the mass under Sipari or whatnot, just being dealt with by, by those Dervish and Dervish are having a bit of a comeback, which was uh, Santa's first signature unit. So I'm sure he's very happy that uh, oh. his Dervish are coming back <laughs> and strong. Speaking of Santa's signature units, the scepter is online as well. Santa's Santa's ready for some harassment play here. And magical. We say signature well, unit because Santa was originally an Orzum, an Orzum chat, right? He just loved. Playing oh yeah, Orzum absolutely. That's how he played, uh, but now he's diversified quite a bit. But we still remember him from his early days. And Dervish trying to deal with those uh, Zakals. Blast damage is always good, but is it good enough to deal with that many units? Uh, he's gonna try his best. As nope, nope, nope. He doesn't want to do that. <laughs> to be fair, the way is well, the okay. So Santa, the cool thing I like about the Santa's build is very clever because the dervish get rid of the mass hunters which would be threatening the scepters so they force the call to be built so force magical to build a call but then santa has the scepter to deal with magical's calls so santa's as long as santa keeps their numbers right compared to magical's numbers santa will be fine I however santa's struggling to get numbers that's the one thing here santa's struggling to get numbers magical has the army value has just army size advantage so, unfortunately for Santa, this is not quite working out as well as they would like. Yeah, the, the Empire Unbroken comes down to get an AoE on that tower and extra defense. He's coming from the back to try and deal with all these units. The Magical just has a bit too much. Quiddle's coming in from Red Harvest as well to help just bring a few more, a bit more shields in front of his units. Of course, blood shields that uh, will die yeah. as they go, but that's fine. They also attack, so that's what you want. That is exactly what you want. So magical, magical, still able to at least maintain something of a position. But Santa, 
Santa's like as long as they hold the line, they're fine. They're awesome. They just need to gradually expand. It's up to Magical to make sure that Santa can't hold parts of the map. Oh, it's another tower heading down. Yeah, Magical just has complete map control. Santa needs to figure out a way to get it back. He has a good composition of many units. Dervish are perfect with jumping on those mass hunters. They can chase down the enemy really well. And can he get the last of the call? Yeah, he gets the last of the call, then turns yep. back. Doesn't need to fight this. Uh, wants to camp before he heads out. His Magical's reinforcements come back in force. <laughs> it's always a dangerous proposition. Need to be careful on how much you want to run forward. Santa, ah. just like it's map control is one thing, but again, it's the where you have your units at the right time, like what units you have and where you have them and when. Yeah, but look at the army value right now. There's 1500 advantage for uh, for Santa, which honestly is a decent difference, especially after Magical seemed to have won a few of those fights. He's coming back looking for counterattacks with a few mass hunters. Always a fun proposition to get those in there, get a few worker kills. As a, and then send in the rest of your army as Magical is as Santa's completely out of position, but that means Santa can attack somewhere else. He's getting ready to attack into the main of Magical. And Magical's production is not gonna be lasting very long here. Yeah, well, Magical's heading back immediately. Adds uh, nice defensive position. Not much to surround with those resources placed right there. How does Magical want to engage this? Heading back into the main, doesn't want to attack from the other side. No, that just means centers no. won't die, though. They can head back home immediately. Yeah, exactly. They have they've this high ground to fly over. One, ooh, actually, one might go down. But uh, then they go back to the Magi and heal up. Like, Santa's, Santa's got this prepped. They know they know what's up. And now that they forced Magical inside their base, Santa oh. goes for the contain. We can yeah. have a pretty strong contain, but is it good enough? That's a lot of units on Magical's side that will come down to... The engagement Red Harvest comes out immediately from, from Magical. Harvest summoning Quiddles. As soon as units die, they're attacking the main units. Scepter's at the back, really dishing with their AoE attack, dishing the damage. But is it enough as Magical doesn't think so? He pushes forward and no. jumps Magical, up the units. Magical nails the Scepter. Santa calls it. They go getting routed. Only Magi left. Can't hold the line. Santa forced to engage another fight. And they don't have the units to do it. Magical's just wrecking Santa's army. That early advantage Santa had, it's gone. Oh, and those towers slowly but surely going down. Another one's still alive. Magical, ha even behind us, had enough to go for a counterattack and killed Santa's third entirely. As yeah, Santa's our main army. And that's it. He knows it. Magical yeah, he knows goes it. to the grand finals. Santa 2 1 after early cheese. Magical ends up winning both straightforward games. And. That's that. Santa will be fighting against Wachezo in the Losers Finals. We will have a short break because it seems like a good time between winners and losers finals. So go get some water and some food and whatever. We will be back in a few minutes with a with more of the Immortal Break the Game Weekly number 22.